The GameCube was the first time that I ever used a wireless controller that didn't feel like I was using a wireless controller. At the time, most attempts at wireless gamepads used infrared technology, which was ultimately useless. If the receiver ever lost sight of your controller, it would lose connection, and the others that tried radio frequencies, well, they were pretty terrible as well. But Nintendo changed all that with their WaveBird wireless controller. Finding an original WaveBird can be a little difficult now, not to mention the challenge of finding one still in good condition that players haven't messed up over the years. But that's where today's video comes in. The folks at Old School revived the much-loved WaveBird into what they call the Falcon. They sent one in for us to review, and I have to say, I think they've got something special here. Let's get the basics out of the way first. Just like the original WaveBird controller, you won't be finding any vibration in this device. While you might not be exactly happy with that, I'd consider it a good thing, because without vibration, the two AA batteries you'll need to power it are likely to last a lot longer. The Falcon comes bundled with a receiver that pulls energy directly from the GameCube. There's no batteries needed here, just like the original WaveBird receiver. You got a power switch between the D-pad and the C-Stick as well, and even if you forget to turn off the controller, it appears to go into some sort of sleep state while not in use to save some battery life. Just like the original WaveBird, all you have to really do is plug it into your GameCube and play it. There's really no worry about setting things up. But I don't think this is an exact match for the WaveBird. There are some differences. The original WaveBird had a dial both on the controller and on the adapter that allow you to select different frequencies. This was a smart method to prevent multiple controllers from causing cross connections. If everyone is using the same signal, every button push would be accepted by every controller input all at once, which would really suck. The Falcon doesn't have the ability to switch signals, unfortunately. When we asked Old School about this, they confirmed that at least two controllers can be used at the same time, but we never actually tested that internally ourselves to confirm. What we did test, though, was this one controller that we had access to, and I think it was very stable and it had a great fast connection. The Nintendo WaveBird felt very responsive, to the point where it felt like a fully wired controller. Here, the Falcon doesn't disappoint. I didn't notice any delays or any problems that I've noticed in other third-party wireless controllers using this radio frequency method. With all that said though, hey, <laughs> I'm not a Smash Brothers Melee Pro. I was able to play Smash the way I would normally play it, but I'm sure a Smash professional won't be giving up their tried and true wired gamepad anytime soon. For everyone else though, this will probably work fine. The original GameCube controller is one of my favorite designs for a controller ever, and I also think the WaveBird was a good solid design as well. The Falcon mimics essentially everything about the WaveBird, including that chunkier bottom that made the WaveBird visually iconic. The button placement is identical, each one feeling as responsive as you would hope, including the Z button. The C stick has that rubberized tip that makes it a breeze to use. Its movements are smooth, and again, very much like the original. However, there is a good and bad side to that. The Falcon is so faithful to the original that it also mimics the unfortunate D-pad the GameCube was known for. It's just not that good. What is a little different though, is the thumbstick. It's a subtle difference, but it feels a touch more sensitive than the original. But nothing that prevented me from playing any game, though I think a Smash Brothers player might notice some differences. I also noticed that the L and R triggers were a little loose. Again, nothing awful, but noticeable. When you fully press them in, you'll still feel a click like you should, but it's not as pronounced as it is with the original GameCube controllers. Overall, I think Old School has done a great job with making this controller. Fans of the original GameCube who want a brand new WaveBird-like design are likely going to be really happy with the Falcon. Just keep in mind though, this isn't Bluetooth. It's old 2.4 GHz wireless tech. You'll only ever be using this controller with the adapter included, meaning it will only ever be used for the GameCube. But I'm thinking for most of you out there, that will just be fine. Old School has made some great controllers and devices recently, and I think this one matches up with the quality you'd expect from them.